start with an EC of 1 to 1.5. The plant is in the growing or vegetative phase. Increase the EC during the cultivation. Add canazine to stimulate bio-life in the slab and to achieve an optimal condition of the canna cocoa. Check the pH and EC of the medium regularly by taking samples. As soon as you change to 12 hours of light a day, the plant gets a signal to flower. About one to three weeks later, the plant growth is tempered and it starts to bloom. Start adding PK1314 four weeks before harvesting. This results in big and firm crop development. These plants are ready to be harvested. It is very well possible to use canna cocoa three times without any problems. If you reuse cocoa, we advise you to rinse the substrate with double doses of canazeme after harvesting. Use of canazeme during the growth minimizes the chance of passing diseases and helps old roots disappear. Let the rinse substrate rest for a day and you can start again. Pre-growing is a method with the purpose of obtaining broader and stronger plants without using space in the growing room. The small plants are planted out into a bigger pot or onto a bigger block before the plants are placed under light with a relatively blue spectrum such as strip light or a metal halide light. There are several advantages using this method. You save space because you grow in a separate room. As a result of that, you save money as well. Pre-growing results in healthier, stronger plants that deliver a heavier harvest. Another way to pre-grow is in a Peter's pot. If you do not know what it is, then keep watching. A Peter's pot is a small pot of about 7 to 10 centimeters. Fill the Peter's pots with canna cocoa. Put a rooted plant in every pot. Dip the pots in the rhizotonic and spray the leaves as well. Rhizotonic contains useful minerals that are important for the root development. Put the plants under strip light or metal halide light. Leave the plants under this light for about a week. Now the plant is rooted well. Cut the bottom out of the pot. Put the plant with the pot on the growth medium. Repeat the pouring and spraying treatment with rhizotonic. The plants start to root in the medium immediately. The plants are ready to start blooming now. This is what a fine result of pre-growing looks like. Reproducing by cutting is ideal if you are interested in cultivating your own favorite species. plants will grow up evenly, you save money and the risk that your plants get infections from outside are diminished. The most important condition for making good cuttings is a healthy mother plant. Put the starter plugs on a cutting tray and dip the tray in water. A tip, add trichoderma to the water. This stimulates root growth and provides protection from molds. 
Dip the tray with the starter plugs in the solution and wait until the plugs are saturated. Find a good shoot. Cut the shoot on the bias from the mother plant. This is your cutting. Remove the biggest leaves from the cutting. This prevents too much evaporation. Dip the cutting in the rooting powder or rooting gel. Wipe excess powder gel off because too much rooting powder has a negative effect on the root formation and plant growth. Use trichoderma powder as well to kill possible present germs. Squeeze excess water out of the starter plugs. If they are too wet, mold will be formed. Place the cuttings in the holes that you made for this purpose. At the beginning, the leaves of the cutting will be limp. It will disappear automatically. It is convenient to use a cutting box. If you don't have one, a plastic box covered with plastic film will do. Open the slide valves of the cutting box for ventilation before you place the cutting tray inside. Sufficient air is important for the plant. It prevents mold. Cuttings grow perfectly well under strip lighting. Make sure that the humidity in the box is minimal 75%. The cuttings will root best if the starter plugs are not too wet. Do not water the blocks for a couple of days. When the plugs get too dry, then dip the tray in water again. Be aware that the cuttings get irreversibly damaged if the starter plugs get too dry. After seven to ten days, the roots will be visible and the cuttings are ready to grow. In order to measure nutrition concentrations and acidity in peat, cocoa and soil, you have to dissolve the present minerals in water. The dilution factor that is used differs from country to country. In Holland, we use one part substrate in one and a half parts of water. With the results, it is possible to take steps and adapt the nutrition pattern if necessary. In order to define the nutrition condition of the substrate, we start by taking a sample. The sample has to be a representative average of the root environment. Scoop a bit of substrate out of the root environment from as many as possible different spots. Put the gathered substrate in a bowl. To measure correctly, the samples must have the right humidity. The air pockets need to be saturated with water. If the substrate is too dry, it needs to be moisturized with demineralized water. It is moist enough if water runs out of the substrate when you squeeze it. Fill a measuring jug up to 150 milliliters with demineralized water. Add substrate up to 250 milliliters. Stir well and let the mixture rest for at least two hours. After that, the substance is ready to be filtered. Measure the filtrate. If the EC is lower than 0.6, then you need to increase the nutrition concentration in the nutrition tank. If the EC is higher than 1.2, then lower the nutrition concentration by adding water or rinse with clean water. A good pH lies between 5.2 and 6. A pH that is too high or too low can be adjusted by altering the pH of the nutrition upwards or downwards with Canna pH adjusters.